Hi I'm Gail, I'm going to be showing you how to make a family dinner today, a spaghetti bolognese, hopefully something that all of the family can enjoy together. So I find the key with making spaghetti bolognese is to get all of your ingredients prepped and ready first so that you um, have everything to hand and you've done all of the, the chopping and the preparing before you begin. So the first thing I'm going to do is in a measuring jug with half a pint of boiling water, I'm going to pop the stock cube in here uh, so that it dissolves and uh, just uh, prepares and is, is properly um, dissolved before we come to use it a little while later. So just uh, crumble that cube into the boiling water, um, give it a little bit of a stir and we'll just set that on one side and uh, leave it till we come to that part of the recipe later. The next thing is to get all of your um, cutting and, and chopping done. So I'm going to start with the onion just to get it out of the way. Uh, sometimes chopping onions isn't very nice, but I find the best way is to take both the ends off of it like this. Get rid of the uh, brown outside. And lots of people say that they don't particularly like onions. I know particularly with children, a lot of children say they don't like onion, but actually when it's nicely finely chopped, um, you can't really tell it's there. And, uh, it does give a really good flavour to dishes, which is why it's used and included in so many recipes. And we'll just take our outer skin off, get rid of all of the layers that have got the, the brown on until you get left with the nice white onion inside. You could use a red onion in here, it doesn't matter what sort of onion you use. Now I always stand my onion up like this and chop it from top to bottom. And the reason for that is that when you then come to dice it, you've got your nice semicircular layers here, which I laid flat, so that I can then chop through it in slices like this. And then when you turn it around the other way, you can then just cut that way through and you'll have nice fine bits of onion because the layers will all fall apart and create smaller pieces as you go. And obviously the quicker you can do this job, the less likely you are to be in tears afterwards, uh, because as we all know, onions are rather inclined to make us cry. Mind your fingers, especially if you've got a nice sharp knife to do this. So just to get ahead, I actually have already uh, prepared the other one of my onions. So that's, that's the two of them now ready. So now I'm going to do my garlic again, a bit like an onion, it's a member of the onion family. So you take the end off and peel the outside uh, skin off of it. Um, all about adding actually both vitamins and uh, flavor to your, to your dish as you're cooking. So two corns of garlic going in here, cloves of garlic, and peel the outside off. And then you can either chop this or squash it, or if you've got a, a garlic crusher, you could put it through a garlic crusher. I'm just going to finely slice mine. That's what I usually do. And then just chop through it a few more times to make those bits nice and small. So obviously the more outside edges you create on something when you cut it, the more interaction of the flavours you're going to get when it's all in, in the pan, because there's more surface area for the other ingredients to touch. Okay, so the third thing is then uh, a carrot. I'm going to peel mine here, just using one of these style of peelers. There's lots of different styles. I'm sure you'll have your own favourite. Most people have a favourite peeler that they've got used to over the years. Again, take the top off and the bottom, chopping as small as you can really so that you don't waste a load of ingredients. Now, the thing with carrot is that it takes uh, longer to cook and to soften than some of the other ingredients. So um, the bits of carrot need to be chopped nice and small so that once they've been in the, the pan with the other ingredients and the heat's been on them, that will soften up um, quite a lot. And also, if you've got fussy eaters in the family, um, you obviously want to have these pieces as small as possible. Um, disguise a whole load of, of things in recipes like this. Now, I've chosen today to pop in um, 
carrot and in a minute we'll we'll come to preparing celery but but actually in spaghetti bolognese you could pop all sorts of other things in um, some people like to finely dice like this much the same sort of size keeping the ingredients very similar sizes um, they like to pop in a courgette or um, any type of pepper really a red one a green one yellow whatever you can get um, all in. Okay so I've finished uh, chopping all of the the veg that needs to go into the recipe as you can see it's you need to get it all ready before you start that's the best way to do it really so if you find you've got to spare 10 minutes in the morning get your carrots chopped pop them in a little plastic pot or a, a plastic bag they'll keep fine until you come to use them in the recipe. If you can get ahead of yourself then sometimes that's helpful. I'm just going to give this stock a, another little stir just to keep make sure it's uh, dissolving properly so we come to use it in a minute. I'm going to move on to now cook my, uh, my meat. So this is just um, minced beef, just uh, like the gas here. So the purpose of just cooking this through on a hot heat um, to start with is basically to um, slightly cook the outside of the meat because that seals in the juices and very importantly the flavour of the meat before you uh, continue cooking it. So we're just going to let that sit there for a, a couple of minutes whilst it starts to cook. Okay, so you'll see that this now, um, the underside has browned off really nicely so you just really want to try and flip it over if you can without stirring it too much in because you want to seal the other side of the meat. Just leave that for a couple of minutes. So as you can see this is nicely browned off now one or two tiny bits of pink left there but not to worry about those that is how we want it to be so what you need to do now is to just push your meat towards the edge of the pan uh, because we're going to use the middle and uh, just pop our onions in there and the heat of the meat cooking on the hot pan We'll just start to sweat those onions and start them cooking. same time I'm adding the garlic in there as well. So that's your meat, your onions and your chopped garlic all into the pan and again we're just going to leave that now to uh, gently cook through, sweat those onions for probably about three or four minutes. Okay so you can see that these have nicely uh, sweated off, they get a little kind of sheeny glisten to them once those uh, onions have started to soften and, and sweat in the warm pan and they're using the juices, the little bit of juice that came out of the meat when it cooked. So I'm now going to start to stir all of this together because we're ready to begin adding some of our other ingredients. So I'm going to good uh, mix around, get those things nice and evenly distributed and then because, as I said, it's uh, a harder ingredient and it takes a little bit longer to soften. I'm going to get my carrot into the pan next. And give it a good stir in with everything else. Once you've tried these things out, you can adjust the quantities of the different group ingredients and find what you really like. And then we're just 
going to stir in our celery as well. So that's nicely been cooking there for another couple of minutes. So I'm slowly going to add our stock to the pan. Just add it to the middle, it will find its own level in the saucepan. Make sure you get all of that out. In. And then I'm going to add also a tin of tomatoes. Now you can use chopped tomatoes or you can use a tin of uh, whole tomatoes and just chop them through yourself. Just for ease, put a tin of chopped tomatoes here. You can see that little bit of uh, tomato left in there. So add a little bit of hot water to your tin and just give that a rinse around. Okay, so just Smush that round like that, make sure you get all of that nice tomato flavour out of the tin. And then also we're going to add the asata to the pan as well. Which, uh, asata is basically cooked and sieved tomatoes, so it is more tomato but it's uh, much smoother. see it's now coating everything that's in the pan. Yeah, like before add a bit of water to your uh, carton, give it a shake around to get the tomato off the inside. You can see the amount that's still coming out of that after we seem to have emptied it. And finally I'm just going to add a couple of squirts of tomato puree I will stir in. Just adds that rich tomato flavour to the pan. So we're just going to leave our pan there cooking for the next 10-15 minutes uh, on, a, on a heat that just uh, keeps it bubbling around the edges, simmering it so that all of those vegetables soften and the tomato flavour gets taken up into all of the ingredients. And while that's happening, we're going to get on and cook our spaghetti. So first of all, put a, a, a reasonable amount of hot water in a pan. You want it to, to properly cover all of the pasta that you're going to put in there. Um, put it on to heat. And let that come to the boil. Okay, so the uh, water in the pan is now boiling nicely. If you've got a packet uh, this sort of size, this would do uh, about seven portions, seven adult portions of uh, spaghetti. So um, measure it out, take care of what you're putting in. It's about 75 grams per adult that you need as a portion size, and obviously a bit less for children. And um, the good thing about having the pan of water already boiling is that if you start to lay your spaghetti into here, being careful not to burn yourself with the steam coming off the pan, you will see that it just softens and starts to, to lay in the pan nicely as you pop it in. So put it in from three or four points around the pan and then it will just curl around the edge as it cooks nicely and bend its way down. and it will drop all below the water. So our spaghetti is now cooked. You can see that um, because it's nice and soft. Um, sometimes it's good to just take a little bit off the end of one of those and just bite it, make sure it really is cooked. So we just um, drain all the water about, out of that and, and strain it now, dish it up onto plates and then top it with our delicious bolognese that you can see has been cooking here all while we've been doing the spaghetti.